Bonjour everyone and welcome back to my channel The Waves of Your Soul. Today's video is gonna be a good old fashion tarot and oracle deck haul. I'm just gonna show you the goodies that came into my tarot library tarot collection in the last three months. We're gonna be discussing them, my first impressions and then of course I'll be mentioning in future videos, in favorites, in more in-depth reviews, all of that good stuff. But today just a good old haul. I wanted something quite easy to get me back into the flow of filming because if you don't know I took a little break. I hadn't really done since starting my channel. I wasn't feeling very well physically so I needed some time to recover. I want to take this opportunity before I get into it to wish you all a happy, joyous, healthy and wonderful year ahead of 2022. I'm beyond grateful for every single one of you and so whether you've watched my videos or subscribed or commented, I just want you to know how grateful I am that you're here. Thank you so much for being part of this lovely adventure with me. So if it is your first time here, hello, my name is Marine. I'm a French tarot reader if you couldn't tell by the heavy accent. <laughs> I love everything tarot and oracle related. Uh, there's plenty of content on my channel where I talk about my decks, uh, how I use them, how I read with them, etc. I also love reading the cards, so I also offer pick a card reading, empowering tarot readings on my channel. So if you'd like to see any of those things on the timeline, hit the subscribe button, the bell, all the things that other YouTubers say. <laughs> I would love to have you join the tide. And without further ado, let's get into my good old fashioned tarot and oracle deck haul. So just a little bit of a disclaimer, obviously there's quite a lot of decks here because one, it was Christmas, so I got some Christmas presents. Two, I gifted myself some Christmas presents because let's be real, I'm a Leo rising. I always like to treat myself to nice things. And third, I did get some decks that I had ordered ages ago, like some of them even dating back to 2019. Yes, you heard me right, 2019. But pandemic happened, I live on a tropical island if you don't know, in the middle of the Indian Ocean, things already took ages to come, now they take even longer, in this case sometimes even three years, <laughs> it's not even funny anymore. And so this is why there's quite a lot of decks here because some stuff that I bought ages ago, they're still trinkling in and it's a surprise. It's like every time I open my mailbox, I'm like, ooh, here's a package. I forgot I ordered that like two years ago. Let's see what it is. It's like Russian roulette. But every time I get a nice deck because obviously it's something I ordered just maybe like a few months or slash a couple of years ago. So this is why you might see a lot of decks here. I wouldn't normally, you know, accumulate that many decks, but it just happened that since the pandemic, things are arriving all at once. And so I've taken to do these little holes because they're fun. And it's just, you know, something fun, lighthearted. If you clicked on it, you want to see some decks. So let's get to it. So let's start with uh, the first three decks I got. They date back from uh, November time. My dad actually went to France to visit uh, some family members. And because things are so hard to get, kindly agreed to be my deck mule and <laughs> to bring me back a couple of decks I wanted that I couldn't get here. The first one being the traditional manga tarot by Los Carabeo. So this I had been eyeing for ages. This is a mass market deck. It comes in a little tuck box. Your stereotypical Los Carabeo. Affordable, I would say. I don't remember paying more than 20 euros for it, especially because there was some kind of sale. Uh, so it was great and I think for all of my French viewers that they've just translated this into French Although to be honest, I don't really know what they translated because it's the kind of thing where because it's Los Carabeo um, It usually kind of follows RWS and you have a little white book that is not huge So even if you don't speak English, but you I mean if you don't speak English, what are you watching? <laughs> You're probably just confused <laughs> So anyway, what am I saying? Yes, I don't know why they translated it in French because there's not much to translate because the guidebook is, you know, it's just your stereotypical plus Caribbean guidebook. There's not a lot to it, but I would be curious to know what they added to the French version. Anyway, the English version, here are the Macs, which I love. They're fully reversible for anyone who is interested. And I don't know how to edge this. I need help people out there, what do you think? What color should I edge this in? I was thinking silver maybe? 
What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Uh, and so if the name wasn't a clue, this is a manga deck. And the reason why I got this particular deck is because I've been really back into my video games kind of phase. Uh, I'm a very chill gamer. But I definitely do enjoy video games as part of self-care and I know that's something quite controversial to say, especially in the spiritual community because we're supposed to be keeping high vibes all the time and video games are bad for you, they're gonna lower your vibration. This is the kind of bullshit I've heard on social media, by the way. And uh, to all of that I say, F off. <laughs> Let me live my chill video game life in peace. If playing video games or if um, watching Netflix or if any of the things that people on, you know, on those spiritual social pages are trying to make you feel bad about, if any of those things actually make you feel good, then do it. Nobody's out there trying to tell you what is gonna lower or higher your vibration. As long as it's not becoming an unhealthy habit, that it's like affecting your other part of your life, then I think it's fine. Anyway, all of that to say, I'm fully back into enjoying video games as part of self-care. Like I say, brought me so much joy, especially when I was feeling very ill at the around Christmas and I couldn't really be out of bed, I had a really bad flare up with my chronic uh, pain situation and so I was very not mobile and so <laughs> I really enjoyed playing uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild and things like that and so this tarot kind of reminds me of those video games elements that I really enjoy. It's fantasy based, as you can see the artwork is beautiful. I'm in love with this artwork. Um, it follows RWS so it's very easy to read. It also, I also picked it because if any of you have watched Arcane on Netflix, which is an anime TV show, which is based on a video game, which is fantastic, maybe one of the best shows I watched in 2021, Arcane it's called, amazing. Um, I don't know, play the video game that is the show is based on, but you don't need to, to understand the story, it's so good. This is kind of like the setup it reminds me of. This is very much the aesthetic of that show. And so this is why I really wanted this deck. And honestly, I don't know where this deck had been on my life because when I discovered it, um, I fell in love with it instantly. And so when my dad was going to France, I was like, please bring it back for me. <laughs> because I knew it would be easier for him to bring it from there than for me to get it here. And I'm so in love with this deck, it's beautiful. I love that it follows RWS, but I it does, it's kind of like, it has its own light and shadow parts. The artwork is stunning, it reads beautifully. I have not been able to put this deck down since I got it. And it brings me so much joy. And look at this death, I love this death card. One of my favorite cards of the deck. Do you know what I love about this death card? Is that she's actually elderly. And uh, I love that, I'm sick of seeing young death. I think it's so powerful to have an elderly death, isn't it? I just love that so much, so, so much. So this deck is amazing. Look at this hermit. Oh, I can't put this deck down. I've been using it nonstop. It's a joy and uh, it is a traditional manga tarot by Los Carabio. The next one that my dad kindly helped me bring back is the Kitty Kahani Tarot. This is a mass market edition of an deck that used to be I think indie that was out of print that is so hard to get it's so expensive but they have the German mass market version by Urania and when I discovered because this deck was actually part of my old time I want this deck so bad you know those decks that are out of print and you really want but you know you're never gonna get because they're so expensive the Kitty Kahani Tarot English edition anyway the indie etc I had been eyeing for so long and I never thought I would get it because it was so expensive. And then I discovered that it existed in German mass market. And so when my dad was going to France, because we can't get Amazon delivered here, I did a little Amazon order to get this delivered to France so I could bring it back. And I'm so happy it's in my hands. And it doesn't matter that it's in German and I don't speak a word of German because it follows the um, tarot system. And I'm familiar with tarot, so I'm okay. Plus, maybe I'm gonna learn a little bit of German along the way. So as you can see, it comes in one of those stock boxes. So I got it on Amazon France, but it's just the German edition. So if you type Kitty Kahani Tarot on 
Amazon, I'm sure you'll find it. And it comes with a very great guidebook, actually, all in German, obviously. And I did use Google Translate app to read it. And there's some fantastic spreads in there, like really great. Uh, a lot of them. There's a lot of great information. So actually, the Google Translate app was pretty good at giving me the gist. I just wish my German was more than non-existent, so I could even understand it a little bit more. And look at this box. Isn't it fun? It's just, it's just great. Honestly, Urania, uh, I think who did that? 10 out of 10. Great quality. Anyway, let's look at cards. Here are the backs, which I am in love with. And it's the same backings uh, as the English edition that I wanted, so they've kept that. I love that. It's very much RWS based. But as you're gonna see, Kitty Kahani is an artist who is using very bright colors, very quirky characters. And so even though, you know, I'll totally be able to read this because as you can see, this is obviously the Hermit, plus you have the number, etc. Um, it does still kind of do its own thing-ish. It's not a pure RWS clone. And why I wanted this deck so badly is the colors, first of all. I was in love with the little characters, their bright colors, the fact that they have crazy colored skin like green and purple and pinks. I love that. I think it's that quirkiness mixed with bright colors, mixed with this kind of garish, kooky vibe that's really made this deck all out to me. And uh, I'm so happy that I got it as a mass market edition. And look, the great thing about it is that even though it's in German, is the miners don't even have titles on them. So that's even easier for me to understand. Like, I, obviously, this is the Two of Swords. If you know Tarot, uh, you know that this is going to be the Two of Swords. There's a lot of pineapple in this deck and little palm trees, which <laughs> are so part of what I love so much. I love pineapples. <laughs> Obviously, I live on a tropical island, so look at this Nine of Swords. Isn't this great? The worries coming out of that person's head. So it does its own thing. That's what I mean. It's not like a typical clone, but it's just really cool. I love this deck. I can't wait to use it. I'm going to do pick a card reading with this. I'm going to be using it for like personal readings. I I'm, I'm can't wait actually to do pick a card and, and readings on my channel with it because I think it's gonna be so cool. And yeah, I'm so happy I got it. The quality is very good for mass market. It feels like a kinder egg, this deck, in the sense that you open it and then it's gonna be full of little surprises. Like in each card, you're gonna see little things. And I like that. I think it's uh, one that you could get a lot of really interesting reading with. And even just the colors, like, it makes me happy. Obviously, I love colors. Have you seen my nails? So this is a vibe. This is me in a deck, really. <laughs> totally my aesthetic. Okay, let's move on to the Reclaim Oracle. So this is another one that I got delivered in France so that my dad could kindly bring it back for me. This is the first edition. The reason why I got it then is because at the time of me ordering uh, this Oracle, the first edition was on its way out and it wasn't sure when the second edition was coming out. And so normally I might have not ordered it so soon. But I just thought, you know what, it needs to be done. <laughs> I don't want to wait for months and I don't know the next time someone that I know here is going to go to friends for me to be able to bring it back. So it was just a good timing. So this is a beautiful indie oracle, indie deck. Look inside, it says, I took a deep breath and listened to the old brag of my heart. I am, I am, I am. And this is a quote by Sylvia Plath. It's beautiful. This is an in indie oracle deck by a French creator, Marion Constantin, whose uh, company is called Little Darkness. Uh, but even though she's French, her creations are in English. It comes with a really great guidebook. Did I put that away? Yeah, the guidebook to it is um, kind of like handwritten. So it's really cool. As you can see, for each word, it feels like it's a little journal. You're peeking into someone's journal. And so for each word, each card, you get a little um, added message. And so, oh my god, this deck. How can I explain this deck? Well, first of all, here are the backs, which are beautiful, fully reversible. And it came pre-aged in black. And this deck is unlike anything I have, but it is so potent. I have not been able to put it down since I got it. It's helped me immensely whilst I was going through my flare-up. I, I had a really bad end of the year, you guys. I was just feeling really ill. 
Um, my chronic pain was off the roof. I spent Christmas day in bed. I was just not able to do a lot of the things I was supposed to be doing. It was just not nice at all, which is why I took a break from filming. I'm doing much better now. Um, so thank you so much for the kind messages. You know, I really appreciate it. And uh, I just want to be really transparent with you when I'm not doing good because I think it's important to not put on face masks <laughs> on here and I want to be completely honest anyway so anyway this deck really met me where I was during my a bit of a downer time and it was exactly when I need what I needed so as you can see it kind of follows this little being that is going through every single emotion so every card is a different emotion so we have here arrogance hate uh, we have discouragement, so those are quite um, negative or I would say more heavy. But there's definitely more light emotions such as joy and confidence, etc. And so this is really a deck that you can use to explore your emotion. Like what is your heart trying to tell you right now? What are you feeling? Can you put a name on what you're feeling? Can you put a name that is at the root of your wound, that is at the root of your anger because maybe you're feeling angry but there might be something below that anger maybe it's not anger maybe it's fear maybe it's criticism maybe it is envy right and so and you can do that for happier vibes as well if you're feeling so joyous about something maybe it's not joy maybe it's confidence maybe it's uh, contentment maybe it's appreciation so it's kind of this deck is very much dedicated to help us explore our emotion help us explore our heart our wounds our memories you can do this to pull cards around friendships relationships behaviors you can do spreads with it you can use it accompanying tarot decks you can do this for journaling for example let's say you pull a card today and your card is doubt what does this make you think because a great thing about this deck is that it's not just powerful words it's the images that go with it look at this doubt card like it's just there's something about this deck that grabs me very much deep in my in gut that it's like a gut reaction every time I pull those cards and it's something I never thought that I needed you know and yet it fits so well with my practice with my healing practice with my self-development practice with my um, shadow work practice it's it speaks to me so beautifully look at this joy card it's like joy yes this little being is obviously happy it's elevated etc but we still see the wounds here so it's still showing that you know to feel joy you have to have known what it's like to not be joyous and you have to accept that joy may be fleeting but you still want to enjoy the moment it's about grabbing the moment when you can because you know that it won't last just like everything won't last just like sadness won't last either and so there's something beautiful about this deck something so moving so emotional i think marion did an amazing job at depicting each emotion it really draws out some very deep reactions from me and from everyone i know who uses this deck actually look at this content card this deck is beautiful it's healing it's uh, also very deep so obviously it's the kind of deck I, I don't think i would pull a card a day uh, so far I've used it for doing spreads like exploring some of my, you know, what am I feeling, what's my internal landscape, or exploring memories, exploring some relationship, friendships, etc. And it's been very enlightening. I've also used this deck for pulling for the, uh, next to my new moon card. So like, you know, what is the emotion that I need to embrace what is the emotion that i need to release there's so much you can do with this deck there's actually a couple of spreads in the guidebook as well and i've actually paired it with the outgrow yourself tower and oracle which is one of my top five uh, 2021 decks which you have if you haven't watched this video you totally should <laughs> you've seen this one the outgrow yourself tower and oracle is in my top five favorite tower decks that came out last year in 2021 and this one together with the outgrow yourself is the bomb.com they're like a match made in heaven so i've been loving that one very much okay let's move on to christmas presents so from a uh, family and friends i got the happy tarot and the star child tarot this is such a nice surprise i didn't expect it the 
French Mass Market Edition because yes, this is a strange child tarot came out Mass Market in France. I'm gonna show it to you in a second. But first, let's talk about the Happy Tarot. Uh, this is from my lovely friend and I think they just saw tarot deck and thought Marine likes tarot and it says happy on it, let's get her that. And you know what, they were so right because this is so cute and I don't have it and I'm so glad I have it now. This is a Los Carabio deck. I'm really loving Los Carabio decks at the moment. It's affordable, it's great, they do a lot of stuff and it's nice. So this is, you know, fairly affordable. You can get it everywhere, Amazon, Booktable, Citory, etc. And as the name suggests, it's a deck full of happiness <laughs> I didn't have this deck and my friends know me so well that they thought you know what she ne she's gonna love it and I do so here are the backs and as the name suggests the happy tarot this is full of happy people <laughs> happy cute little kids living their best life in what looks like to be Candyland so there's a lot of sweets sugarness candy uh, cakes and all of that good stuff in here sugar sweet rose colored glasses vibes rainbow like happy times it's just really sweet that's the best way to describe this deck look at this death card the death card is mounting this little horse uh, and it's smiling <laughs> and the people are happy to see death the sun is shining and it's like yay death is coming <laughs> <laughs> so I love that but what I love about this deck is that it's not just sugar sweet rose tinted glasses it still follows the RWS and so I can still totally read it like any other RWS it has the traditional imagery we expect from an RWS you know so for example temperance you still have the angel you have the crown chakra link you have the sun you have one feet on the ground one feet in the water you have the cups it's all there except it has that sweet vibe however it's not just like happy 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 as you can see the devil is still the devil like there's still people chain etc but it just doesn't look threatening so i think this obviously is a great one for maybe younger audience uh, or for people who are threatened by the tarot in general or people who just want to enjoy connecting with your inner child or would just enjoy fun light-hearted imagery i have heard though from people like from watching videos after getting this that even though it's very sugar sweet apparently for some people this deck reads really mean <laughs> i i'm curious to see i'm gonna try it obviously it's still in order i haven't had a chance to play with it yet but uh, I like, so look at this five, this four of cups, it still looks, you still have that feeling of, of sadness here or discontentment, boredom, etc. So it doesn't like cut corners into the emotions. That's not really what I, I don't know how to best describe it. This is where my English likes me. But you know what I mean? The five of cups, that kid is still crying. You still have grief and sadness, etc. But instead of crying over something that maybe would be very tormentous or deep or dark it's just crying about spilled ice cream <laughs> but for a kid when they spill their ice cream it is sad in that sense i think it does convey the emotion really well just with a happy year sweeter kind of joyous vibe all the knights are standing on little like toys kind of vibes and they are my favorite court cards in the deck let me find you some more aren't they the cutest i love the knights in this deck they've done a fantastic job honestly who created that Serena Fika it's brilliant because even the colors fit the elements so all the uh, pentacles are very earthy colors as you can see very much green and earthy etc then the wands are very pinks and and very orange and the swords are still very um, so this is the one still the swords are very gray as you can see and the cups were very blue um, and the swords are wooden swords which makes so much sense for little kids which is great and it just is this deck is just brilliant and so the guidebook actually is really cool I've, I've, I've skimmed through it because the messages are also geared towards happy messages so i think this is great if you want to read tarot either for someone who is younger who is maybe or who is threatened by traditional tarot imagery and or if you want to read tarot for yourself but you're just in a place where you need a bit of happiness where you just don't need something that's going to put you down if you feel already down if you 
feel already like in a crisis moment, sometimes it's good to give yourself a break and to give yourself that ability to still go into the cards, to still read the cards, to still explore yourself, etc. But not push you over the edge, not make you feel any worse. And I feel like this will be a great one. I'm definitely going to be using this when I'm going through a flare-up or, you know, anything like that. I think it will be great for that. And I'm so happy I have it in my collection because I didn't really have anything like that. So thank you, my lovely friends. Next up, we have the Star Child Tarot by Daniel Noel, the French Mass Market Edition. So this is normally an indie deck. Daniel Noel created quite a few decks in indie tarot decks. She has the Star Child, different versions. She has the Moon Child. And uh, I knew that this was coming mass market, but I didn't know that uh, my family picked it up for me for Christmas. Obviously, they know I like tarot. They saw it in the shop and thought, oh, that looks cool. It said new because <laughs> it's one of the new release. So they picked it up for me. And so I'm actually really glad I, I got it because I not I don't think I would have necessarily picked it out for me, but this way I get to try it. So in the French mass market edition of this deck, it comes in a big box which let me try and see if I can find it because I did put it away for uh, storage because it was just cumbersome but let me try if I can find it. So this is the box it comes in in the French edition, French mass market and it retails for 32 euro. So it's not cheap in mass market standard but it's still much cheaper than the indie edition for sure and it comes with this book right here which is obviously all in French which is beautiful. So I will say the book is gorgeous it's very beautiful, it's full color, there's a lot of information in there, there's like additional uh, stone associations like crystal association, astrology symbols, etc. Beautiful, very gorgeous, production quality 10 out of 10, there are some spreads. Obviously, Arcana Sacra, who is the mass market publisher who released it, did a great job at translating everything that Daniel Noel created and making sure the packaging is beautiful. It's just a bit too much. <laughs> so I put the box away because I don't need that big as box when it comes with another box that is perfectly fine to fit in my library. So I just keep that one, <laughs> which is much easier to store. So this, in this little box, uh, we have a quote here, which says, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known, which is a Carl Sagan quote. And yeah, it's, it's, it's very nice. Look, like production quality, 10 out of 10. The cardstock is kind of, uh, I'd say it's semi-matte. So it is, here are the backs, which are beautiful. So for anyone who wanted the Star Child Tarot by Daniel Noel, but who doesn't want to pay indie prices, I think you could totally get the French edition. Because even though the titles are already in French, it is numbered. So as you can see here for the High Priestess, we have number two right here. So you can uh, know, you know that number two is going to be the High Priestess. And it follows tarot structure. So you'll be fine, you know, and especially if you're familiar with the deck and you know the deck, you just didn't want to pay full indie price for it. Then do I recommend the, the mass market edition? Absolutely. <laughs> I think you will be saving a lot of cash. Listen, I think it's fantastic to support indie artists. I have bought so many indie decks myself. I'd say half of my collection is indie. But when a mass market publisher picks up an indie deck, nothing makes me happier because it means that it's going to be accessible to more people. More people are going to be able to enjoy it. And that's what we want. We want the tarot to be accessible as to as many people as possible. So the fact that the mass market um, French publisher decided to pick up and translate the Star Child is so exciting. I am praying and crossing my fingers that now they are gonna be uh, translating the Moon Child next because actually if I was to get the any of Daniel Noel decks, it would be the Moon Child. That's the one I want. I actually even paid for the Moon Child before <laughs> and never received the parcel. That's another story for another day. But uh, after that happened, I was like, well, I'm not going to pay for it a second time. I've already bought it. It never came to me. So I just didn't want to repeat that experience. But um, yeah, my, my family got me this translated um, Star Child edition. And I'm really glad that they got it because like I said, I don't think I would have picked it up for myself because what I wanted was the moon child and um, I wasn't sure I would resonate with the star child purely because 
it is that very starseed cosmic vibe which I don't know if it's my aesthetic or not to be honest I'm not really resonating with the whole star child starseed concept uh, it's not very me I'm much more of a grounded person you know my moon is in Taurus so I definitely do like to be grounded to the earth and I don't resonate at all with coming from another planet and of course that's my personal resonance if that speaks to you I'm not judging that at all I think it's fantastic that there's something out there for everyone the aces are beautiful in this deck look at that this is the ace of swords so I wasn't I'm not sure I'm gonna resonate with it but it's a gift I'm super excited to give it a go um, I'm glad that I get to try it and I can't deny that this is very beautiful this is very like hashtag instagram aesthetic right this is the kind of deck you're gonna see on instagram and it's it's just like it's nice looking i'm not gonna lie it's beautiful the collage is gorgeous uh the cosmic vibes are very beautiful i just don't know how i'm gonna resonate with it but i can't deny that it's beautiful and i'm excited to give it a go and at least i didn't you know it did, it wasn't a huge investment the fact that it's in French, it will be easier to um, trade or resell if I want to pass it on. But I'm definitely going to be giving it a try and I'm excited and I'm excited to get into the guidebook. And I wanted to mention it because for anyone who's been wanted the indie edition, definitely I would totally recommend if you can get the mass market edition for not too much delivery fee. I think at 32 euro you get, a, you know, you get what you guys say in English to get money for your buck or something around buck <laughs> it's worth it is what i'm trying to say okay let's move on to christmas presents from me to me <laughs> and they're the best kind of presents honestly i gift myself the best presents <laughs> that is so a leo rising thing to say i think but it's true i really do give myself the best presents although i can't lie the presents i did get for my friends and family were lovely and i'm so happy i got them but uh, those two are just the two decks that I had been eyeing for ages and it was Christmas and I was like, you know what, Maureen, treat yourself. So we have the White Fly Tarot by Danilo Sanino and Tarot by Caro. Those two are indie decks. So I got them on a French indie shop called Roi de Coupe. I will leave the link to their shop below for any of my European uh, based viewers I highly, highly recommend this shop because they store a ton of really cool indie decks that normally we would have to get shipped from the UK or from the US and it would cost us a bomb. Fees to deliver to Reunion weren't astronomical. The shipping happened super quick. It's a great customer experience. It's a one-man shop. And it's done by someone that you can see is passionate by Tarot Oracle. And so it feels nice also to support little independent store owners. And I got those two um, from them. So I will link the link to their shop below. They really store a lot of cool uh, decks and they definitely change their repertoire all the time, which is cool. So let's start with Tao by Caro. I saw this deck online, I think on Instagram or something, uh, and I fell in love with it and it came on the top of my wish list. And when I knew that I was going to be doing myself a little Christmas order, this is the one I wanted the most. And I have been using it since Christmas and it's fantastic. So it comes in a two-piece box. It doesn't come with a huge guidebook, just a little pamphlet. Again, I leave all the links, by the way. I usually leave links description in the description box, the names, everything in the description box. And I think I need to edge this in black, actually, because uh, it would actually look better than those white edging. But this is a RWS uh, inspired, which is my preferred system. So it's not a surprise. But it's done in this very unique art style that is done by Caroline Clark that just oozes personality and that is just so unique. So the first thing that drew me to this deck is the fact that in each suit the element just vibrates through. Look at this Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is on fire. The horse is on fire. The wand is on fire. It just feels so full of that element. And it's like that for most of the court cards of each of the suit. You really breathe that element in. So that was one of the first things that attracted me to it. Next, obviously, the bright colors, the art style, and also the diversity. There is definitely an effort here to include different skin tone, which I 
immensely appreciate and value. Look at this Queen of Swords. Her hair is floating like a cloud. Her her dress is made of clouds. How beautiful is that? I just this deck is amazing, and so I've not been able to put it down. This and the traditional manga tarot have been my two decks that I've been using since Christmas, so and for most of January, and they are amazing readers. I've had some fantastic reading with the tarot by Caro. It speaks to me so well. Uh, it's beautiful when you put all the cards together. It's really, really, you know, eye-catching. The colors, the style, it's just a joy. And uh, of course, it follows the RWS, so it's very easy to read for me anyway. Look at this Knight of Pentacles. It gives me Julius Caesar's vibes. <laughs> I think it's that crown. But also the, you know, looking over my empire and feeling abundant and all of that vibe. It's very uh, Caesar, I think. I love this fool with this little, like, very strange looking hat. <laughs> it's so fun. I just, this deck brings me so much joy. And look at this star card, one of my favorite cards of the deck. It's beautiful. So yeah, Tarot by Caro, I've been loving it. Uh, Look at this two of swords. Okay, I'm not going to be doing that for its every card, but come on, every card is just outstanding. Look at this knight of pentacles. Like, that's what I mean. The element just oozes through each card. He's literally growing leaves out of his hat. That is a look, by the way. That is a look. I, uh, that's, you know, Fashion Week 2023, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful so yeah loving that one the white fly tarot by danilo sanino this was i would say 30 30 euros 32 euros which is for an indie deck you know affordable like pretty much the same price than the mass market star child tarot which i've just shown you so for an indie deck unheard of um here is a box and this is an i believe the creator is italian the one thing i don't like about this deck okay let's get that out of the way can you see the box doesn't have thumbnails? And so I'm literally every time like an orangutan like ooh, 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 <laughs> trying to get this open. It is so unpractical, especially considering I am very ungracious. So I don't know how to do that in a nice ladylike way. That's just not me. So to try and help me out, I have put a little ribbon here. Uh, it does make it better to take the cards out. But yeah, I just wish there was some nails cut out. But this is the first edition. I think they're going to release a second one. So maybe for the second one, they're going to be... Uh, see, the struggle is real. Here's hoping. Can I cut some nails myself? Do you guys do that? Let me know in the comments. Have you ever cut some nails yourself in a box? Uh, I don't know if I can, like... Have you managed to? What do you use if you do that? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know because this is a struggle, honestly. I'm probably going to end up putting it in a bag. It's just, you know, this is first world problem, obviously. I have bigger things to worry about, but just giving you the full load down here. So the guidebook is translated in English, French and Italian. And in the back, you have the information about the artist. And so this artist originally is a digital artist, like digital creator. I don't know how you say that. Here are the backs. And so he's called his deck the white fly tarot because he's encountered a white fly one or two, no, two or three times in his life. And for him, it was kind of like this animal guide that came at specific times when he did it. And so that's what inspired the creation of the deck. Now, this deck is very fantasy inspired. It's very digital art fantasy vibe. And so this is absolutely 100% my aesthetic. And this is why when I started to see images of this deck, I fell in love. I love anything fantasy. I love anything that is set up in another world. Take me out in another world. Help me escape. Bring me to somewhere where there is magic and mage and wizards and dwarves and elves. I'm here for it. I love that stuff so much. This is a mix between like... Uh, I would say more elves, kind of dwarves, Tolkien fantasy mixed with avatar alien vibes. I don't know how to explain it, but you're gonna see the images, you're gonna understand. And the par particularity of this deck is that the image, some of the images were created before the tarot was created. So some of the images are paintings from the artist that he then chose to use for the particular arcana. And normally, those kind of decks, they don't work for me. Like if someone creates artwork and then someone tries to, that same person or someone else, try to fit 
that artwork to the tarot later on. It doesn't always work, but this time for me it does. There's a couple of cards that are not the best for me, like this hangman for example. is It's not bad, but it's just not my favorite. But overall, I think that they definitely go with the archetype. And it's very unique, very unique, very unusual. And it really calls to me in that way because I love anything fantasy, like I said, and, and I love that. So there are astrological association. I'm not really one for astrological association. Like I can get them or leave them. So for me, it's it's not really, I don't really pay that much attention, but it does go into that a little bit in the guidebook. And as you can see, this is full on like anime, Zelda, taking you on a, an adventure. Let's go explore some quests. Very interesting. All of the pages are wearing masks. He explains why in his guidebook. Uh, and so see, the court cards are giving me more Tolkien vibes, right? <laughs> but then some of the cards are more Avatar. Anyway, this is just a really cool deck. I love the aesthetic of it. And this is why I got it. I wanted something fantasy. I can't help myself as soon as something is based in another world. I, I am very uh, much attracted to it. All of the aces are those kind of like dark hooded people that are showing you that ace, uh, whether the wands, etc. I think that's really cool. And look at this six of wands. It's unique. It's different. Like we don't normally see that very violent side of the six of wands. Like normally we see someone who is winning war and they're coming back and they're being celebrated. But what we don't say in that card, what's kind of like insinuated is that at what cost did you win the war? Because usually when you win the war, it means that a lot of other people on the other end died, right? You killed a lot of people to win the war normally, unless you came to a peaceful agreement. But here we see the other side of that, so like that, that victory. At what cost did you win? At what cost were you the victor? I think that's cool. Uh, it's just really beautiful. There's a dragon, so obviously I'm here for that. Another page with a mask, and yeah, it's just a really beautiful deck. I haven't used it yet, because like I said, I've been mostly using the traditional manga tarot and the um, tarot by Caro. This is gonna be the deck I move on to next, I think, because I'm really curious to see how I'm gonna read with it. But I think it's awesome and uh, the cardstock isn't like anything I have. It feels very rubbery, almost plasticky. I can't explain it. Maybe this is why the deck was a bit cheaper. It's not bad cardstock though, it's just rubbery. I don't know how to explain it, but it's not bad at all. And I love the pan as the full. I think it's cool. Finally, let's move on to the last decks of this haul, which turned out to be quite a lot. <laughs> so I've definitely got my fair share of decks to be working with in the future. These actually came together in the post. This is the Revival Art Tarot Cards and the Revival Art Lenormand Oracle Cards by Tarot Studio. These are indie published decks. I ordered these in 2019 and I received them I think either the last week of 2021 or the first week of 2022. So about three years, I would say, that it took to come. And to be completely honest with you, I just thought they, I had made a, you know, I crossed them off. I just thought I would never get them. It is what it is. So this is the first edition of the tarot cards. I think they've since released a second edition. I mean, in three years, they've had time, obviously. And I got the Lenormand card because at the time I was getting into Lenormand and I only had one and I thought, let me get another one. This is funny because I got this at a time when I obviously don't necessarily have the same taste as I do now. So whether I'm going to be keeping this or not, I'm not sure. I'm definitely going to give it a go. I'm definitely going to be using it. But I just, I'm not as excited to work with it as I think I would have if I had got it like three years prior. Um, this is, in, like I said, indie deck. It reuses pre-existing artwork. It comes with a little guidebook with keywords, etc. And here are the backs. The new edition has different backings, but they are reversible if that matters to you. The cardstock is very nice. It's matte. And considering that my copy traveled around the world for three years, the cards aren't wrapped. So I'm very surprised. I thought they would be a mess. 
with the humidity etc but no they're fine so at least that's that <laughs> so this is still in order because like i said i haven't used it because i've had other things to play with and like i said i've not been feeling the most inspired to work with it uh, so it's gonna need to wait and then i know it's gonna have its moment we're using pre-existing artwork so different paintings you know those decks there's quite a lot of them out there um, at the time, like three years ago, I thought that was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. Obviously my tastes have changed in the sense of what I used to read, etc. I have different criteria now. I can't deny that this is absolutely beautiful though, because it is, it's reusing beautiful paintings. They've done a great job at making sure it's not pixelated or anything. The production quality is great and maybe it was for my past self and I don't know if now I can read with it. I'm still gonna give it a go because it's very beautiful. I think this would be great maybe for past life readings or for connecting with ancestors etc because it has that older feel. It does follow the RWS. I think they've done a really great job at finding images that do fight, fit in that archetype so with the five of coins. We still very get much the idea of someone who's been shunned away from, you know, homes and who's being isolated outside in the cold and having to ask for help, etc. Uh, Eight of coins, someone working on their craft, like, it's clever. Artwork that they found to fit is clever. But there are some cards I'm not a fan of, like the court cards, I find very meh. And they just don't speak to me that much. The queens do, but the knights, they don't really. They just, and the king just, meh, they don't talk to me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But the queens do, and some of the cards do, like this two of swords is gorgeous. So I'm just gonna have to give it a go and, and try it, and I'll keep you updated on it. One thing I don't like is that in the guidebook they didn't say what artwork is. So this one I know because this is one of my favorite paintings. And it's in the Majestic Her Star Wars way, which is an indie deck I use a lot. So some of them I recognize, but some of them are I don't. And especially for the court cards, like I would like to know who this is. And why is this person the King of Wands? You know what I mean? Because to me, they just all look like rich white people. So <laughs> I need to know uh, why did they, why were they chosen? And that's unfortunate. The fact that I don't like when someone decides to use pre-existing artwork and they don't tell us where they got it from. Nobody's gonna try and steal it because it's public knowledge. Like, you didn't create it, so give back credit where credit is due because it's not yours. You didn't make it, you just found the images from an artist that already created it. That pisses me off. So, anyway. <laughs> Moving on. So like I said, at the time I got the Lenormand because obviously I thought I would uh, like the set because I was getting into Lenormand and you know, oh old marine, if I could come back in time and tell you some things. <laughs> no, it's not that bad honestly. Uh, the Lenormand is actually pretty cute. It also reuses uh, pre-existing artwork. Here are the backs. So similar vibes, that kind of like sweet looking little child. Very beautiful. And uh, you have the correspondence of the card here. Very nice. However, there is a big but to this story. The big but is that there is one card that is atrocious. Look at this. Okay, so let me show you more. So beautiful cards. Feels very like you're walking in some kind of museum beautiful paintings so aesthetic we are here for it imagine the grand tableau it's gonna be so beautiful look at that i'm so happy oh beautiful mountain it's very gorgeous and then are you ready for it in about one second you're gonna get attacked visually what the fuck is that <laughs> i hate this card i hate this card this is the book card this is a letter card and this is the heart card out of all the beautiful paintings you could find to fit with this beautiful aesthetic this is the one you chose i've talked about this with uh, niha from the curated shelf we had a lot of laugh on our instagram dms talking about this card because it is the worst card i have ever seen in my life to depict the heart like my seven-year-old godsons could do better than that they really could like i'm highly tempted to ask them to draw me a card and i print them and insert it here because i know they do a better job <laughs> at painting your heart than this so i'm now highly considering reading lenormand without a heart can i do that is that controversial 
I'm sure I can. I mean, who needs love anyway, right? <laughs> it's not that important. <laughs> so maybe I can read the Norman without the heart card. I'm seriously tempted because I hate it so much. The rest is beautiful, but that card, that one card is an attack. The audacity of that one card to come and ruin a perfectly beautiful fine deck. The audacity of the creators to decide that they were going to choose this to go with the rest. I have no words. What do? What can I do apart from asking for help? What can? I, what can I do? What would you do if you were me? Would you put it away? Would you use it anyway? Would you make your own? Would you burn it? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not going to burn it. But let me know. I would love to know uh, your thoughts. Okay, so my friends, this is it. These were all the decks I got in the last three months. As you can see, there's plenty there to keep me going. I'm actually doing a no buy January. So I'm doing that with um, my friend over at the curated shelf. So I'm not buying any decks in January. We'll see if I extend that in February. But as you can see, I've got plenty to keep me going and I'm excited to get into them. And of course, you're going to be seeing them in future videos, favorites, etc. Uh, if you want to know more information. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. And until my next video, as per usual, take care of yourself and keep navigating the waves of your soul.